Void warfare can be an incredibly complicated affair. However, as with most things in life and war, the rules that govern every action can all be traced to a set of fundamental truths. In void warfare, these fundamental truths take the form of the three principles. 1. The speed of light governs all, except when it doesn't. A tactician must always be aware of any shortcuts to circumvent its limitations. For instance, FTL-based mechanisms such as subspace scanners can provide real-time readings and scans without light lag. 2. For every offensive technology, there is an equally effective defensive technology. For every laser, there exists a shield. For every kinetic projectile, there exists armor and inertial dampeners. For every plasma lance and bolt, there exists electromagnetic fields to render them inert. Yet no ship can prepare for every eventuality. There is no jack-of-all-trades in modern warfare. Specialization is unavoidable. It is the tactician's responsibility to determine the holes that come with specialization and exploit them. 3. If all else fails, never forget. Aviate, navigate, and communicate. As munitions are dynamic in movement, so too is a ship. Never underestimate the importance of evasion and maneuvering for the purposes of offense and defense. And finally, the underappreciated rule, communication. I have tactical in command. Veer spoke firmly, triggering the memories of my years in the academy to flood back to the forefront. Affirmative, I have the helm. I promptly replied with the same vigor and curtness. Yet for all the tactics and strategies born out of these rules, void warfare can be, and still is, an extremely complicated affair. It can be incredibly technical. Computer, get us a firing solution on the heavy cruiser with the Mark IX laser focusing array. Acknowledged. It can be incredibly disorienting. Helm, reorient his ventral side up as soon as we hit the heavy with the Mark IXs. We need optimal firing angles with those Mars 5 kinetic batteries. It requires a well-oiled machine. Quick burst thrusts fully operational. Gravitic maneuvering systems initializing. And a well-oiled crew. Veer, ship layout puts three of the five kinetic batteries still operational on the ventral aspect. However, the charge rails of all ventral guns are operating at 20% capacity or less. The two we have on the port and starboard are both operating at 72 and 77% capacity, respectively. I suggest prioritizing the starboard gun. Negative, Lassar. We're facing multiple targets. The name of the game is to saturate them with as many munitions as we can. Besides, we have the anti-ship missiles for a more powerful punch. It poses unforeseen challenges. Alert. Primary power relay conduit is non-functional. Concurrent charge of primary and secondary weapon systems is not possible. Which requires thinking outside of the box. Then relay the power transfer to the secondary power relay systems. Transfer of power relay to secondary relay system will result in a 59% loss of power relay efficiency and a 39% increase in overload risk. Then turn off the power to all non-functional weapon systems. Acknowledged. Power relay efficiency recalculated to 9% loss of efficiency, and 10% increase in overload risk. Good enough. It requires a whole new perspective on the definition of distance and scale. Targeting solution complete. Optimal firing distance calculated at one light second from target. That'll be 300,000 kilometers, give or take. Veer spoke nervously. Too close for comfort, but I'll take it. Given we're firing the laser focusing rate at one light second's distance, the fire to hit delay should be a second as well. I had to crane my head to physically meet Veer in the eyes at that proclamation. You're joking. Surely your laser weapon systems can't be effective at that distance. Unfortunately, yes. Normally we'd be firing at a distance of at least 5 to 10 light seconds away, but given the age and reduced output of the laser, the effective range is down to just one light second. I shook my head. I could ogle at the specifics behind human technologies later. Right now I needed my head in the game. The ships approached us in a V-like formation, with the heavy cruiser taking point and the rest of the flotilla trailing behind, with the sole exception of the bulk transport slowing to a dead crawl behind the relative safety of sheer distance. Whatever it was carrying, it didn't want to be in our direct firing line. The bridge monitor was now dedicated to displaying the trajectory of the flotilla, the V-shaped group making a beeline towards the satellite, with only us standing in the way. A bubble representing our effective firing range was superimposed upon the local area, with the flotilla inching closer and closer towards it. Alert. Primary target. Heavy cruiser. In range in T-minus 55 seconds. I could hear the sounds of the ship's electronics thrumming louder and louder in the background. I could feel the droning vibrations of whatever was happening deep within the core of the ship resonating through the superstructure increasing in intensity. Alright, Lasara, Let's get the show on the road. Like I said, rotate us as soon as we get the first shot off of the heavy cruiser so we can get a few rounds off with the kinetic batteries. Then rotate us back quickly so we can get the laser back on them. I calculate that with every rotation, both weapon systems should be charged and ready to fire. 
Alert. T-minus 20 seconds. Understood, Veer. Was all I could say as the knot that was growing inside my stomach grew larger and tighter with every passing second. The heavy cruiser was now highlighted on the live map, moving at sublight speeds completely unheard of by Venerian technology. It blinked with every ping of the active sonar, each blip twisting my gut further and further. Alert. T-minus 10 seconds. It inched its way across the map, seconds now dragging on for what felt like minutes. Until finally... Target in range. Fire! Firing. Alert. Hyperdrive activation detected. The heavy cruiser suddenly disappeared from the map. The last blip disappeared just as the laser reached its target, hitting nothing. Alert. Hyperspace tear detected. The same tagged vessel reappeared on the map, this time positioned directly behind us, but well within range of our weapons. Alert. Incoming kinetic fire from Interloper Flotilla 1. Alert. Incoming laser fire from heavy cruiser. We felt the laser first. It was unnerving. Because there was no sudden jolt, no massive thud, not even a light tap to indicate that we were hit. No. The laser fire didn't have any physical effects. Not until the shields gave out or a hole was blasted in the side of the ship. All there was at this point was a tactical readout, one that now read that our shields were at 75%. The kinetic rounds would take 10 seconds to hit us next, which required maneuvering on my end to get us clear of the rounds. Round one, clear. I pivoted the ship in maneuvers I didn't think were possible. At least, not on Venerian vessels. Round two, clear. The ship seemed to defy the laws of momentum at times. Something I attributed to the so-called gravitic systems. Round three, clear. But it wasn't enough. Not when the munitions weren't just dumb projectiles. Not when they were smart. Round four, direct hit. This time we felt it. The whole ship shuddered and buckled as the vomit-inducing sounds of warping steel and composites echoed throughout the bridge. Damage report, Veer barked. Direct hit to deck 7. Superficial damage. Structural integrity holding. No decompression detected. Veer, we have to redesignate targets now. We're being hit on two flanks. Roger. Maintain a firing angle on the heavy cruiser. I want it. Alert. Detecting four rounds fired from Flotilla 1. Alert. Detecting main spinal cannon power signature from heavy cruiser. Elders above. I can't get a fucking lock on the heavy cruiser with the flotilla harassing us every few minutes. I yelled out desperately. Once more maneuvering this ship weaving and ducking, avoiding all four salvos only for the heavy cruiser to fire its main weapon, hitting us just below the bridge. The lights went out for a few seconds. The computer systems remained operational, but every single system seemed to idle before finally resetting. Alert. Direct hit from heavy cruiser's laser cannon. Shields at 20%. System overload averted. Auto reset to all weapon systems to avoid systemic overload. Computer, how long until recharge? Veer asked. Weapon systems recharge. 92 seconds and counting. All right, all right. We still have this, Asara. Just keep dodging until the weapons are back online and... Alert. Detecting four rounds fired from Flotilla 1. Alert. Detecting main spinal cannon power signature from Heavy Cruiser. Stay calm, Lasar. All we need to do is... Alert. Detecting ten anti-ship missiles approaching from Flotilla 1. Time to target... 25 seconds. My heart dropped as I saw the bridge monitor light up in a total of 14 distinct projectiles approaching us, each with its own distinct trajectory, each taking unique paths towards us, swamping us. Fear, I can't keep this up. I'm not trained for this fucking vessel. I once more steeled my mind as the ship lurched forward at blistering speeds. I once more steeled my mind as the ship lurched forward at blistering speeds. The internal inertial dampeners were all that stood in the way between us and what would have been a pile of jelly as we defied all traditional conventions of safety with each dash and weave. We were fast, but not enough to outrun them. Not enough to outmaneuver some of them. As the flurry of projectiles now approached dangerously close, and hit. I heard another shrill shriek of metal composites creaking and moaning in the far aft of the ship. Then another, this one causing the whole deck to shudder, indicating that the inertial dampeners and kinetic barriers were finally weakening. Then another, this one enough to throw me off my seat as the sounds of alarms filled the bridge. Alert. Hole breach on deck nine. Seal it off. Affirmative. Damage report. All anti-ship missile batteries now inoperable. Negligible damage to other vital systems. Structural integrity compromised. Caution against harsh maneuvers is advised. Lasara, do we have a lock on the heavy cruiser? Veer's voice penetrated sharply through the litany of alarms. It, yeah. I shouted back as I struggled to get back in my seat, this time actually strapping myself in with the seat straps. All right. Computer weapon stats. Laser focusing array locked and ready to fire. The bridge monitor now displayed our ship, the conical projection that was our narrow firing angle, and the heavy cruiser that was dead ahead of us, crosshairs and all. Fire! One of the quirks of void combat is the lack of tactile or palpable feedback when it comes to offensive maneuvers. There's no recoil from a rifle, no thunk of a grenade launcher, no whoosh of a rocket, 
not even the visible tracers from a machine gun. Everything relied on the ship's computer, on sensors and constant reports. It was unintuitive, but something that organics needed to get used to. Target missed. What? Both of us shouted simultaneously, as a complex litany of codes and mathematical formulas now filled the bridge monitor. Damage to laser focusing arrays targeting sensors detected. Compensation for damage will require recalculation. How long? 329 seconds. All right, start. Alert, detecting four rounds fired from Flotilla 1. Alert, detecting main spinal cannon power signature from Heavy Cruiser. Alert, detecting 15 missile signatures approaching from Flotilla 1. Fear, I finally spoke up, turning my seat around for those precious few seconds as I stared directly at the AI. You have to directly interface with the ship. There's no other way. I... I can't, Lasara. I... Veer, I can't risk pulling off any more risky maneuvers. Not without knowing the ship inside and out. You know this. You know you're the only one who can run and gun at the same time. You know what you have to do. Lasara, please. You don't understand. I... I can't. Alert. Impact in 22 seconds. I quickly turned back to face my console, accelerating the ship forward, buying us those scant few seconds of precious time. Alert. Impact in 18 seconds. I pushed the ship as far as I could stomach it, the rattling of the decks beneath me acting as a constant reminder of what might happen if I kept tempting fate at the current rate. Alert. Impact in 10 seconds. The bridge monitor was now a tangled mess of trajectories and impact points. Every single line, weaving, contorting, and making those final few adjustments to take us out. Forming something that almost resembles a spiderweb of projectiles that could hit us at any turn. Impact in 7 seconds. We were caught in a web, and there was no way out. I couldn't see any holes, any gaps to exploit. There was nothing I could... Assuming direct control. Helm console override. Weapon systems override. The ship computer spoke, in a voice distinctly different from moments prior. In a voice that was unmistakably male. A voice that was unmistakably fears. Impact in ten seconds. Fear did it. He found a gap I couldn't exploit. Tunneled through it, and now he was taking us out of the web of death we'd found ourselves in. He... Initializing e-warfare subroutines. Enemy frequencies intercepted. Enemy missile frequencies locked. Retarget all 15 missiles to target. Heavy Cruiser 1. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. Everything I used is in the description below. If there's a story you'd like to hear narrated, let me know and I'll reach out to the author and see if we can make that happen. Thanks again. It's a scary world out there. But remember, to be brave and look up, to seek the stars.